Professor Salat Fatmi. Um, Dr. Fatmi is a graduate of the Aachen University class of 1990. Uh, he went on to train uh, in the United States uh, and he currently serves uh, in the section of cardiothoracic surgery within the Department of Surgery and is the director of the cardiovascular and thoracic surgery services. Um, he needs no further introduction and we're delighted that he's going to be talking about when it all starts, motivating medical students to consider surgery as a fulfilling career. Dr. Fatmi. So, Asalaamu Alaikum. What is a surgeon? What do people think surgeons are? For some, surgeons are people who are like superheroes in Avengers movies. For some, they are Ronaldos who can achieve impossible. They have this aura of people who can achieve something which no one else can. And that's what most of the people think surgeons are. To the most part, that's very true because when a radiologist calls on the CT scan a, a tumor which is unresectable, Rizwan Khan goes in and takes the tumor out. For some people who can't even walk to the bathroom, Riyaz Lagdawala goes in and replaces both their knees and now they can walk two miles. Some people have no lease to life. They're dying and then they get neurosurgery or open heart surgeries and they get new lease to life. For those, for that kind of a thing, that's what surgeons do. So when surgeons are such, when surgeons can do such things, it's natural for all the medical students to be excited towards surgery. It's unnatural not to be excited towards that. Some or a few would like to become surgeons at the time when they are in schools. For most, they are undecided, but it's in the DNA of every single medical student. It's in the genetic makeup when they enter the medical school to naturally be attracted and become surgeons. It's very unnatural to, to be excited to other specialities other than surgery. That's what I think. So the motivation to become a surgeon as soon as you enter the medical college, it starts right from day one. That's what I say. It starts right from day one. When does it start? It starts with the anatomy dissection hall. In an anatomy dissection hall, when they dissect on cadavers, when they dissect on cow hearts, cow lungs, cow kidneys, that's when the, the excitement builds up. For that, the faculty and I, in, I, I address the faculty to, to invest their time, not just the anatomy professors and uh, colleagues doing their part in the anatomy dissection. All the clinical colleagues should also go and should actually participate in the anatomy dissection hall and put in that, that fire in the medical students. Uh, I had one uh, such person like that, and that, his name was Khalid Khan. And he would spend hours with us in the dissection hall. And he and I would dissect the cadavers all the time. And that's what built that excitement of surgery inside me. And that's where it all starts in the medical college right from day one in anatomy dissection halls. Um, the next motivating factor comes in when these medical students comes to clinical rotations. Now, when they come to the clinical rotations, uh, the third year, the fourth year, and the fifth year, the excitement builds up. They go into the ORs when they touch the beating heart, they touch the livers, the kidneys, they feel that the excitement is there and they would like to become surgeons. That is the time when they, they see a tumor, their eyes start glittering. They say, this is it. This is exactly what I would like to be. What happens with, and uh, this is again to the faculty, I would say, what happens is we tend to then focus their attentions or divert their attentions towards the preoperative care, the postoperative care, the, the ethics. It's great. The ethics is great. The, 
preoperative pathophysiology, the path pathology, everything is great. But imagine a child wanting to learn to ride a bicycle. You will tell them the physics of riding, the disadvantages, the advantages of riding, but never let him ride the bicycle. How would he feel? He will have no passion. That passion comes in only when you would want those medical students come inside the OR, touch, their, touch, the, touch the organs, uh, have blood in their hands, and that's what excites them. That's what, what I feel that the, the faculty should do. And for the students, instead of preparing for exams all the time and feeling, uh, complaining about their work hours and, uh, and the time that they should take off, they should spend the time in the operating room, whether it's early in the morning or late at night. And they have to be coming in early, go late at night and just work hard so that they will they will be in the OR and that requires time. And that is what, what is important. I would say that the students also at that point in time in their clinical years start looking at their mentors. Who are mentors? They're, they're heroes, the superheroes. So some people will, uh, will become their role models. They look at a person and they would like to emulate and would want to become like that. They would like to look at uh, Dr. Fazl Rahman and Dr. Savdar to become plastic surgeons. They would like to look at Shahzad Shamim to become neurosurgeons. They would like to look at Abdul Sattar to become breast surgeons. They would like to look at Rizwan to become liver surgeons. They would like to look at Riaz Lagdawala to become orthopedic surgeons. That's what they are looking up to. And that's where the, the faculty, and I address the faculty, that don't let that, that that fire get away from those medical students. Cash in on it. They are looking at you to be like you. And if you let that all go, then they would not want to be surgeons anymore. They are looking at you to be surgeons because they want to be like you. You don't have to be a part of a formal mentorship committee. Nobody has to give you a position in some, uh, some formal mentorship society or whatever. The mentorship of a faculty is inside you. It's the sincerity and genuineness of the faculty which makes you a mentor, not a position uh, that has been given to you. So I would urge all the faculty to not let that fire go from those children. The excitement keeps on building and the final year comes in. So every single student who has gone through surgery. Now, I, I would be surprised if any student goes through a surgery rotation and does not get excited by surgery. Very few, limited, maybe not, but most will. But then the final year comes in. And then the final year, in the final year, most of the uh, students then are told that the surgery is very difficult to get into. It's almost impossible. Surgeons uh, will have a difficult lifestyle. They, it's tricky to get into a surgery residency. Why not choose another speciality? Nothing wrong about other specialities, but we want to create those Ronaldos, the surgeons. And at that point in time, every other person is discouraging, discouraging them to become uh, uh, surgeons. If a moron like me can become a surgeon, you can too. And the students who are graduating from Aachen University, every single one of them is an Olympian. And there is no way none of you cannot do it. So at that point in time, at the final year, what is it? You need to have your CV, you need to have your exams, and obviously you have prepared yourself for that battle, the battle to actually win uh, win that, that spot. And why would you not be able to do it? What is in it to you that you don't have, which other people from other countries or other people would have? No, you have everything. So those students who feel that they can't become a surgeon just because it's so difficult to get into surgery residency, ask your heart. Don't you have that Olympic material inside you? Of course you have it. And the faculty, please Tell them, yes, you can be a surgeon. And that is where our mentorship comes in. Once you get into a surgery residency, initially there will be preliminaries or 
you get into an AQ residency, it's hard to get into because there are very few spots. But remember, not everybody can climb Mount Everest. Very few, selected few are supposed to climb Mount Everest. And all of you can, provided you have it inside you. Not everybody can run in Olympics. They would rather just enjoy the Sun Open Championship medal, but all of you have it inside you to, to, to run in those Olympics. You need to apply into that. Once you get into the surgery residency, people will tell you that surgery residency is extremely difficult. Yes, it is. It's tricky. You have to be the first one to come in the hospital every day. The janitors would not have been woken by then, woken up by then. You'll be the last one to leave, to come back again at 3 a.m. in the morning, 4 a.m. in the morning. You cannot complain, you cannot explain, and you cannot be one of those who would be talking about, now I may, I may sound wrong, but you cannot be talking in a surgery residency about the work-life balance. You talk about the work-life balance after your residency is done. Because if you want to learn the skills, you need to be a part of that group. And that group is that skillful surgeons and the skills comes with time. You would be humiliated multiple times. You would come at early in the morning, you have done everything. And yet at times you will be told, since you did not check the potassium of that patient, now you cannot come inside the OR the whole day. And you'd be wondering, I have rounded on 40 patients. I've done everything right. And one simple mistake, I would not be able to come to the OR. That's what it is. That's what it takes. And trust me, I've gone through it. Many a times during my surgery res residency, I thought, this is it. I can't take it anymore. But once I finished, I'm glad I did because I became a surgeon after that. And let me tell you, I die, I get reincarnated. I will do it again. I become the surgeon again, 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 and again. So I will not change any of this because every day I go inside the OR, I feel I would like to play this. It's a game for me. It's, uh, it's fun. It's not for the money. It's just excitement, the passion, the, the energy that I get in the OR is what drives me. And that's what brings excellence. Excellence comes from enjoying something, what you do. Excellence does not come in something as a job. That excellence is, 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 uh, is transcribed into your everyday life. Then you will have more energy to do other things. Some people will also argue about going into surgery as Surgeons will have no life afterwards. That is so wrong. Surgeons have the most life afterwards. They will be the ones who will be waking up early in the morning. We have a group of cyclists who are mostly surgeons who wake up and come at 6.15 in the morning to start the cycling at 6.15 on working days. Surgeons will be told that you can't do anything. We have surgeons who have done voluntary work. They go to places which no one else dreams about going. You will have a happier family life if you are happy. You will also be able to focus on certain things which you would never have been able to focus on. And that's what gives you uh, that energy because you enjoy doing something. So surgery is for those, is, is for people who want to do it and who want to enjoy doing it. So kids, the medical students, what are you waiting for? I would say, be a surgeon. Be a surgeon worthwhile. But don't be a surgeon if you want to be the best in your field. Be a surgeon because you want to be the best of the best. Best of luck.